So when I first came here, 2000, um, I started with a friend of mine. She's, uh, she was from Australia, and then later on she left. We were two girls, 50 years old, now nearly 70, 50 years old, but very strong. We were doing all this work alone. And uh, what I did at the beginning, living here and hearing dynamite fishing every five minutes and imagining what the hell is happening in the sea. Nothing, they leave nothing alive, no, no, not the algae, no, nothing. The shells, everything is cracked. And also we had a lot of dead turtles on the shore. They were not hit directly, indirectly from the strength of the, the power of the blow. And uh, so I stopped fighting dynamite. Every time I hear dynamite, I go to the uh, Amin Al-Am police, <laughs> report it. By law, they are supposed to catch them, put them in prison for three years, by law. But then, to please me, they used to catch them, put them in prison, and then someone else from, you know, I'm not going to mention names, political people, they set them free in an hour or two. So they decided to come and, and uh, at 1.30 at night, with their clashing coughs, they stood here and started uh, firing. Two bullets went into the house. Their aim was not to kill me. They could have killed me very easily. But they thought that, okay, <laughs> she comes from God knows where and she wants to change everything, so why, why not scare her? They wanted to scare me. When they left, they stayed for about 10 minutes, the whole thing, da -da 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 -da. then they left. Next day, they were expecting me to be out. The next day, I was working on the beach. Again, they came in with their knives, my car, my, the, the wheels, everything torn. I did not react. Then they started fire on the land, my family's land, down there. But the wind was against this way, so the fire went to my neighbors, not to me. Then they killed my cat, then they poisoned my dog, then they tried every trick in this world, and I did not move. In the contrary, I went and bought a shotgun. <laughs> Whenever they entered, they shoot, and they, they ran away. So, <laughs> It was not easy, it was tough. And, and then when I managed to make it a HEMA or a reserve, that was 2008 by the help of NGOs, international NGOs who came to help, to help me to make this beach a reserve. So they left, they came back, they said we can make it a HEMA, and, uh, you, but we need the signature of the municipalities, uh, uh, Mansouri and Kulayli both beaches and since they were offering money i said give me the money i went up said if you sign this i will give you this amount of money so both of them came there was a booklet like this each one with their representative two four guys from the municipality they signed without even looking at the, what they are signing the rules and regulations nothing <laughs> So they took their money and left. At the beginning of May, they started building kiosks on, on the beach. I came down with, with my kids and we pulled them out. They came to me, my municipality, why are you doing this? We, people want to live, people want to build kiosks, restaurants, things. Read what you have signed. Then they read it. But they keep on trying building uh, restaurants or even there I ha had a problem one year and a half I was fighting them shooting every day every move n n uh, no one could help me not uh, the, the, the ministry nor, nor the UN nor, n nobody just nobody simple there, nobody wanted to face the Mr. B whatever his name 
<laughs> this whole area is his. And he's the one who's giving all these uh, signatures, illegal signatures. Uh, well, it's just by, by uh, God's uh, will that after a year and a half I get a phone call from a general in the army who is following me on daily basis. My God, this woman is not going to give up. So I, he called me, I am going to help you. <laughs> He came and he saw what they were doing and he did what was supposed to be done. They were stopped. They lost a lot of money and they, still they did not learn. Every few months they start something and then I stopped them. And the village people also, they cannot still get it that this is a reserve. You can, there are laws, you, what you can do, what you can't do. They don't get it yet. So it's a continuous struggle. On a daily basis, I have to watch what's happening. My love for life and nature and for what I'm doing. I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm so lucky. I'm one of the very few people at my age at, at 50 years old, I managed to reach my goal and live my dream. Now I'm nearly 70, okay, fine. Hope that I'll continue and I uh, hope that Rami, my boy, had been training. He was 15 when he started working. Now he's a university student uh, studying marine biology. He'll take over. I wish I'm <laughs> positive. <laughs> what? I wish all, all, all the NGOs, national and international, and the, their main aim was not to help. Their main aim was to come over here and just pretend that they are working and put, put the, 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 their name and the, write about this project. I didn't get any help from anybody. I, I love children and when I first started and families started coming with their kids I realized that the kids are the ones that are listening to me not the parents the parents they come here to have fun drink and celebrate but when I sit with them on the table we're having and talk to them it is the kids so I shifted from <laughs> talking to adults to kids so for the last 16 years, I've been talking to kids. Now my kids are university people, young people. Some of them graduated and they're working. But anyway, I built a small little army. If I need anything, I call them, they run here. The love for nature. And hope that there, there is, uh, Lebanon is not all killing because this is something what the Lebanese do when you see a dog or a cat or anything immediately they have Lebanese people with kids they pick the stone and hit why so the kids they see something here that is completely different than what they are experiencing in Beirut or towns or whatever it is they live with me down to earth and uh, I make them work with me uh, they feel that it is their responsibility also to come every year even if it's for one day and see how am I doing um, the positivity there is one positive thing that, that uh, happened this year after all these years I've been trying to get schools to come and see the project, but no schools, no universities would come because this the season when they come to lay their eggs and hatch, lay, laying eggs is they are still uh, at school. And then when the hatchling season starts, they're out of school. The teachers cannot gather them and bring the kids here. So I depend on families to bring their kids over here. But this year, there, it, I have seen an exceptional movement. That is, the, the schools are collecting their kids, even if they are 10 or 15 or, or even 4, it doesn't matter, but they're coming.
that I love. Um, I want them to appreciate nature, to um, keep it clean and get down to earth, not living. Most of them, they come with computers and, and I take it away from them. I give it to them when they leave. Otherwise, the, 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 the whole day they are doing this. And this, this land here, um, I also put them into agriculture. They, they dig, I get, I have seeds, they plant them, teach them. They're young babies, but they do love it. It's just to start this feeling with them to feel the earth work, uh, plant, um, rescue, <laughs> clean. And also when they come and they stay for, for, some of them stay for two, three days, those kids have the opportunity to sit and make artistic things. Usually they collect stones and shells and I give them white glues, they put them together. I can show you a sample. Put them together. To, also that something to start using their creativity. It's one of the things I, um, I insist on trying to develop with the children. Um, I would like to see more and more schools and universities here before I graduate. <laughs> from life. <laughs>